This meeting is being recorded. What's up, everybody? This is the Poker Coaching Study Session. And today we're going to be looking at three bet pots from the small blind. What do we do here? F pot. I would go small. Ace of spades and a jack. 4.8. Ken is right. All in. All in. All in. All the cookies are big. Mostly big. Big or very big. Or all the cookies. He's just going to have a ton of like pair plus draw stuff here. I don't know. Yeah, this is this is risky business, man. I almost feel like you call this. Of course, you call. You got the ace of spades. You can't fold the ace of spades. No, you, you got to call. I think you could fold if you have ace jack with the jack of spades. Look at the EV three point eight eight. Like it's honestly, it's not even close. Yeah. Small four point eight. Jack, um, you might blast here. You might just put all the cookies in. You might just go all in. But I like check or all in. Those what are the about two fourteen. Do you ever? I'm going okay. small. Uh, I'm not I'm a fan of fourteen, to be honest, man. We got off button. We save the rest for when it doesn't work. No, you have. You can't that. fold. You can't, dude. You can't fold. Like if you bet fourteen any jams, you got to call. Yeah, but so if, if we bet fourteen. He calls. We break the river. We still can survive. Are you gonna? Are you not gonna bluff? Yeah, then? of course I'm not gonna bluff with ace queen. Forty five percent. We still got queens, kings, aces. We got the. We want to set a nice uh, yeah. price for our draw. So tell you what, guys. Okay, we check raise. He calls. We didn't turn a spade. We should check. Yeah. I check or jam here. No, it's never a check. I said bet small three times. So Ken was right. Look at that. Ken Seven point right. two. Kentio, gotta learn your Kentio. Now what, Kentio? Uh, pfft, showdown value, I guess. I mean, I, it's probably gonna bluff, but I, I'm. King not... is the best card for a three bet. I know. I I, yeah, I don't want to lose all my bet. chips. Huh? I'm bad here. What can I say? I'm checking. Ken, you can't play like a robot to the river and then say you're scared. What are we gonna do, boys? Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's good. It's, it's no good. good. This is. Oh, are we value betting to get called by Ace Ten? Oh. I don't know what it's doing, man. We're just we're just setting it up so we don't get bluffed by his spade combos. Because now we fold and he has spades. No, nope. you call. just call it off and you lose call. like three chips on average. <laughs> Dude. I would be so tilted if he jams second pair on me like this and I call with this. I would be so annoyed. So it block bets because it's never going to fold the river and it right. doesn't want him to do this with a jack. The, the real question, Gallon, is if you catch yourself doing that, do you rebuy? Um, depends on the buy-in, but probably. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Ashwin, GT was just a super fish. But small. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is a small bet. Ace high, I think. Yeah, we're just going to go small. Yeah. All right, man. This is a good double barrel, dude. Yeah. This is the one. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, my this God. We're me. So yeah, I <laughs> and we were all like yeah, this. We're all like that. We can double barrel that. Louis, what's our turn strategy? Um, can we see range? I yeah. bet it's I think... like maybe, maybe king high flushes, but yeah High, low, okay like that's what i was gonna six. say this is like the best unpaired hand i think this is like an edge case for some reason yeah because we are going to bluff a bunch of diamonds on this turn right so like, like look at the other ones like look at king 10 for instance is king 10 yeah. going with it yep my screen froze there it goes right so king like, if, you have suited, king though. 10, if you have yeah the, the suited one like you want to look at the flush draw diamonds. specifically diamonds <laughs> What's King 10 suited? Is that diamonds or is it uh, something else? It's a little bit of mostly clubs. Honestly, it's everything. Jeez. Club but diamonds in there 50%. Yeah. All right, we all brick this yeah. one. See, so yeah, again, like you said, this one probably dominates other king and queen X's that are actually still in there. Like he's got some king jack, right? Right. So that's kind of what I'm thinking is like, it, honestly, it's, I think the, the cards are the overriding component here in this three bet pot. The fact you have a king and a queen. So, um, like, what do boy, we do I mean, do we just jam? I don't yeah. know. I don't think so. 
or do we bet small? Oh, I think betting bet. small is bad, man, because it went check, check, turn. So yeah, not... I kind of want to. I kind of want jam. I like jamming. Oh, jams. There's it's no like way. something that's a little thinner. Like five X is a little thinner, and maybe it could go a little smaller. But we can get called by as weak. I mean, he's gonna have weak ace X sometimes that we just get called by, and maybe oh, worse. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, being the best ace here on a really dry board, maybe we go half pot, but I think small bets I think gonna be reasonable. Too. Yeah, it's just really dry. Yeah, let's just right. wizard. I'm learning. A range benefits from the small bets there, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a definitely a small. I think it's just the fact that we have ace king, we beat all the other aces. Oh Orange. boy. Oh boy. Um Big bet. yeah. I like that. I was honestly I was flirting with the idea of just jamming it in here. Nah, nah, nah. Who is Jack yeah. then board with a to a, Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. All right, we play check maybe or small bet. That's a bad turn. Check. What a terrible turn. Yeah, stuff it. What's going on in? Why why? Why are you getting everyone to fold who doesn't? You're isolating play? yourself versus hands that just beat you. Looking yeah. for the queen. Does he have it? Yeah, but back to bet four. Four at 10. Bet four and then call the all in. Oh, yep. all so in. Now it goes all in. Yeah. I wanted to do it on the current. I guess, I guess range is. Hands that beat you. <laughs> yeah, range has got weaker. After he checks right. back turn. So after he goes check, check, turn, he's going to have bluff catches at that point. Yeah. So I think your range just greatly wants to jam or there check there. Yeah. yeah. He has like two pairs a lot. Check. Like bluff. check. And you may jam here. This may be another one. This may be another jammer with large bets. Ace queen, ace jack, I'd bet big. And this one I'm going to check. Why? Dude, it's oh, just dude. like these middling the seven, two tone boards. The seven connects to the nine ten. It has locked up equity. So you're just jamming into the straights here too often. If it's uh, 10, 9, 5, it's going to be a jam. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, Peter. I, I like that analysis. I'm kind of cheating, though, because mentally, we, I think the hand before had locked up equity and it still jammed some with a similar hand. But I don't know. I, I, I agree with your analysis. That's how I think about it. So I would go off. Is, that, is this not a good strategy? I think maybe you want to go bigger. I think half is pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe. So it is jamming. Here it wow. is. It it is big jams. But not the primary choice. But I agree with you, Peter. Like, that's how I think about those spots. The fact that it has locked up equity. What does um, Ace Queen Ace Jack do? Dude, he's just going to have so many calls here, I think. He's going to have so many pair plus flush draw type hands and straight draws. You were right, that, on, but not with the spade in our hand. What is locked up equity? So like higher hand classes, um, then is locked up. Scotty. So like when I, I say locked up equity, he's locked gonna have eight. full frequency of like jack eights here, some at some frequency, okay. right? So oh, hands that he'll never fold. Right. Yeah. Okay. The the potential's been realized. Like if it was a a six, there would be a lot of equity potential. Like he's got infinite draws here that he should be seeing a flop with. Wow, well, I'll tell you what, this is going to be a lot easier to play for me now because usually I see that small, he stuffs, I call, and then it's just a disaster for everybody. Whereas now, if I just open jam in his face, it looks... What's he going to do? He's going to call off with a pair plus plus draw or a pair <laughs> plus straight draw. They're going to call, but at least, I mean, I'm not the one doing the calling. It's small. Um, this is going to be a check or very small. Just small. Small is fine. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious. Yeah, small is a thing as well. Um, I like going pretty polar here. I like, I don't hate 14. Um, I kind of just want to jam some. Nope, it just wants to check. Using <laughs> time, I thought 14 was good too. Yeah, it's never it's using. Just the SPR in this setup. If we were just a little bit deeper, it would be good. It's never yeah, going so all in, never going really big so it's always going to be like oh my god did i miss it one big one it's going to be checking you see this like, a lot this. in these um these super shallow spots like you just treat sets as the nuts you treat it as like as like impervious to the flush draws and you just don't worry about it rip it 
Right. So I, I think like there's something interesting here where like if you check to him on the turn, his flush draws and like middling stuff like pair plus flush draw, they're just going to jam into you because of the SPR and we can call where now like you gave him a small bet. He breaks his flush draws. We don't get value from anything other than ace x really. uh, But Galen, like he shouldn't do so for our, that that small size we use on the turn should be really mergy. We should have some of our own draws, some weak one pair hands. So like he definitely yeah, raises be, that sizing some. It would be interesting to see. I don't think like his hands with his high equity holdings that don't have like a lot of showdown are gonna really like pump the volume up there in a three bet pot. I think they're just gonna realize like, okay, if he has like, ace six of spades do you think he's going to raise us on the turn nope. marginal made hand. i don't know i mean against but it's, it's kind of not marginal against that sizing it's kind of good but yeah i mean maybe not but he definitely should have a raising range right maybe king uh, king queen off king, queen ten of hearts or something is he raising that whereas like yeah yeah but then I, I think know. there's other um, there's other you know uh, lines for the value like keep him in with a seven x and five x if they pick up trips mm -hmm. or two pair they've dominated and and drawing dead effectively so like we would love him his seven x to find a trips on the river sure I I don't all. disagree with that all and that that's a that's also like an argument for playing check on the turn where it's like if he's got yeah. jack ten cards or jack ten of spades here. He's going to probably push his equity on the turn with a hand that strong. Whereas, like, he just has to fold it on the deuce of clubs. Yeah. yeah. Now he's gonna but then, of course, from out of position, a, um, you know, a tiny bet is basically the same as a check anyway, because he always is allowed to bet after we bet. So, like, we didn't control the right. action. Yeah. By the way, I'm, I'm playing, I don't want to say devil's advocate, because I don't play check on the turn with this combo really here. I'm just trying to understand the logic behind it. Because, I mean, it's the primary frequency. Checking this turn is, you know, what you're supposed to be doing 80% of the time or something, right? Which is odd to me. Yeah. Yeah, you, well, you unblock all the flushes. You unblock <laughs> all his bluffs. Okay. Yeah, which I would so use as like... On this note, what do we do? Well, I think you just jam it now after you led small turn, and I mean, I want to stuff it. You could also make the case for twelve, targeting some really weak parts. I'm, of the honestly, game. I'm just targeting Ace X at this point. Like I'm jamming and hoping an Ace calls. Well, he's gonna. You could even you could even make the case for three point five to induce. If any hand is gonna induce, like something's got to be protecting that, and like you could make a case for this hand. It's it's check time. He's he you you have to let him bluff the spades and the hearts here and value bet an ace. Maybe maybe it is. And I bet, I still think bet, I jam. Do you bet if you have uh, the queen of heart, Pete, or the queen of spades? No, it's you still allow. Well, you don't have the queen of spades, but when you have the queen of hearts, you you block a tiny bit of value, but like you still unblock all his spade bluffs and all all the other things. Like this is a this is a check spot. It is, but I don't understand it well. Oh, it is a check spot. Look at that. Yeah. And then look at how the EV falls. Like betting small, tiny, 3.5, okay. Betting 12, not great. Betting big, bad. It's all in or check on this river. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's how I would play this node. I mean, you're in a really polar node when you bet small turn like that. Are you guys going in with your low kings? Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. Probably not. <laughs> so the th the king three and the king four they block the straight here. So yeah, they're going. The problem is it's a three bet pot. We just don't have that stuff in range. You should. Do you not three bet the king six sometimes? No, 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 no. Uh, well, I mean, from forty big blinds out of position, I think you do. But I, what I'm saying is the straight. You don't three bet like the three fours. Mm, yeah, right. Right, so we can block him having the nuts. We can't represent us having the nuts. Right. When he doesn't call it off anyway, does he have four three suited? I think this is probably, I mean, maybe low frequency. I don't think four three is performs very well. I think he's got like five six. Right, exactly. 
Five four. Okay. Yeah. I um I think these two high cards are going to lend itself. Or I'm sorry, it's not two high cards. This is the previous hand. Now I'm just looking at the general strategy. So I have an idea. Two by play with king queen is not so good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's a three bet pot, and we looked at this with the big blind the other day, Louis. Whenever it's a three bet pot and there's two Broadway cards. Uh, that up? are particularly not an ace, you have a much more polar strategy. You check a lot more, yeah. and you have uh, some bigger bets. Uh, well, and... it doesn't check at all here. For all, no, every ace high board has no checking in. But the uh, the other Broadways, the king has the checks, and the queen yeah. has the jacks, and the jacks have the checks when there's two of the super, or two yeah. of the Broadways there. So if we look at the general strategy, a side dry, you just range bet small most of the time, unless you have big bet value. And then the higher the second card gets, the more we get to polarize. And then when you're an A side with another Broadway, you just bet big almost every time, most of the time. And then when it starts to be too locked up, like ace, king, queen, stuff like that, you just go back to small. Yeah, that makes sense. And then I, the, the, the dry king eye board for the most part to just range that small. And then when like the tricky part seems to be here, right? It's like from king 10 when from king 10 to king queen. Yeah. Where you check the balls on the whole tree. Yeah. I think and it's like yeah. our three betting range is just really starting to merge with the top of his calling range. So you know. I don't know if we just go too crazy here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And then the queen eye boards are very similar. Yeah. King eye board, queen eye jacks. board, jack eye board are the same as well. Yeah, queens, jacks, and tens. We all have that polar jam strategy when there's two cards that are connected in there between, you know, kind of nine and king. Is this a feature of shallow stacks? Normally, we're not aggressive on a side boards, are we? In three bet pots, generally, we are Salwa. Yeah, we're you're gonna yeah, you're gonna have a very high frequency bet strategy on in a three bet pot on an a side board, just because our three betting range is so comprised of ace x, right? So the way I understood this graph, this could be a check. Um. Yeah, I would have bet large here just because of the two high cards. Queen I board with a jack. Yeah, queen jack six. We're at, we're at 30 bigs, is that right? 40. 40, 40 okay. okay so this right. Um, it's just saying like a larger sloth of the range is going into check. It doesn't necessarily mean like the ace highs are not. So, I mean, what are we, what are we checking there is a better question. Like, are you checking anything that picked up equity here? Or are you betting it? It's it's a lot of the ASEX, to be honest. Like, if you look, a lot of this offsuit ASEX is where the checking's coming from. On their bank. You, you are protecting, so jacks, queens, your sets are checking some of the time. That protects the range under pairs. So ASEX without a spade is where you find the checks. So yes, there you go. I think that's pretty easy to construct. So you protect it with sets, under pairs, ASEX, no interaction. Uh, we probably we probably play check here, yeah. Yeah. We took one big stab, and he called, and we're done. Time to go home. I agree. Check out. Uh, we fold, but did it ever bet this river? It, it did, 5%, 5% frequency. Okay. All right, so not really. Um, Ace high, dry, I like a small bet here. I know we got king, king. If there's a hand to check, it's I'm king. not going big here. Small, going small, small. Micro. Yeah, it's an ace high, dry board. That's right. 
I like playing okay. check now, I think. If we had the king of hearts, I might find another small barrel. Nothing too polar, but I think we play check now. Yeah. You play check hope. Okay, I kind of want to go value now. Like, I would not be surprised to see some like 10 or 17 here. I agree. Yeah, he still has this a lot very of few, check. Very few he aces has, left in the deck. Yeah, he still has a lot of aces in his check range, though. He does have some weak ASEX here. You're right, Peter. Um, I, I think I'm confident enough that his range is going to respond with a lot of combos we still are going to beat. Is it, all, yeah. is it also purely a function that since we're never going to fold to a bet, we just bet ourselves to get value from worse that won't bet? I think it's just a pure value bet, man. Like, um, I feel like when the ace pairs there, we, we beat everything that's not an ace. Literally the entire deck that's not an ace. That's in his range. Yep. And I think of it this way. Um, when that ace pairs, it promotes actually all lower hands because there's we just found out that there's less ace X in his range than we thought there was. Um, specifically, there's only two-thirds as much. Um, so why would you support a larger bet here as opposed to just like a typical small bet? I would still go small here. Is well, it a function that you have better than an eight, maybe? No, it's um, more like uh, I would do it with every ace. It connects well with the buttons calling range, the eight, seven, and of course so, the ace as well. No, it's really, it's better than the eight. I got that right. So having interaction, well, what, what's the function here? Because it's spreading very kind of, large. Uh, it's, it seems to be value driven. Like the bigger, the better your top pair is, the more you. Oh, wait, this is, this is the uh, turn node, Louis. You got to go back one street, my man. Let's ah. go there. So it does seem to be splitting hairs with better than the eight, is where you start seeing that frequency tick up. Yep. Yeah. So no checking ranger. Yeah, uh, it's just range bet, man. Like you got ace high, rainbow, just any two. Any two. Oops. Check. Do you check? I don't know. I'm checking. I would bet. He do, he shouldn't have a ton of nine X here. Like a. a, a I mean, I'm sorry, a ton of 7x. I said 9x. I meant 7x. So I would bet. It's the worst eight we did size up with as well, or the worst ace that we sized up with as well. So he's going to have more aces. He's going to have some sevens. So he will have some better aces. I think the seven actually supports us, though, because we're going to be more frequent to chop with those now. We're unblocking the spade also, which is unblocking some of his continues. That's nice. I kind of, uh, I don't think jamming's crazy. I'm checking and then I'm not folding. That's what I would do. Yeah, I'm checking. I don't hate that strategy either. So, uh, never checks. All in. Well, you just got to be savage. Off top you know what? SPR is, uh, is out. Yeah, it's the SPR, man. Right. Yeah, it is SPR because it's a function of 40 big blinds. You're just not folding top pair. Like, okay, whatever. You're losing this regardless. You'd right. rather generate right. fold equity. All right. Uh, pretty interesting spot. I like a small bet here. I think I'm maybe maybe it goes larger sometimes, like this hand specifically. Why do you want on the previous hand? Why do you want to generate fold equity when you have the ace? You're not getting better. Well, what I'm saying better? is like, um, yeah, I guess you don't really want to generate fold equity there. I'm trying to think like a targeting better. Ace, I'm talking. Was I talking about that hand or this hand? Because this seems like what I'm talking about. Generating savage. You're talking right? about the ace hand. Yeah, I don't know if you want to generate fold equity with the ace hand. Okay, good. Yeah, he he just has it's it's a half pot ratio. He still has to call with pocket queens. And lots of I might have missed. Oh, hey, no, honest. no. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I might have. Missed. I gotta get this aggression in my game. I don't understand that, why that wasn't a marginally made hand. It, it, it's well, you want to shut it down on the... So what do you want to do? You want to shut it down when we hit the pair of 10s here? I do. Check call. 
So yeah, I, think I just I think it's SPR, super man. shallow SPRs. Exactly. I was yeah. the exact same thing. <laughs> I agree. I agree 100 percent Tim. Like if you look at this hand at 100 big blinds, you probably do like put the brakes on. Okay. But at 40, it's like, I don't know, man. There's 30 big blinds in the center here. What do you care? Like we're not folding. No, and he just like has pocket nines and he has some like ace jack and he has pocket sevens apparently. So I think in three bet pots, when we turn equity, we are very inclined to try and represent because uh, we have all the big over pairs and all the big sets. When we turn equity, we're inclined to to bluff and because of the, the stack to pot ratio, our value goes pot or our value goes all in. So our bluffs go all in here too. This is such, but this is not a, but this isn't the bluff. No, but I think there's enough value to be had still. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you guys are calling that value. No, yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I think this is value. This, this, this is a bluff. This is a oh, high end bluff. No. I, I'm not calling this a bluff. I think it's just marginal made value. I Wait, think it's just yeah, show, of it. show us equity. Yeah, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a bluff. Bluffs don't win when they get called. It's not a bluff. See, now, now in real life, I hate to go back to this, but in real life, we're re relying on worst pairs to stack off out of 10. Well, it's not just worst pairs, kid. He's going to have draws, man. So right. let's take a look at his response and see how many better hands he folds and determine if it's a block. <laughs> or see how many worse hands he calls with. Like he, he calls the pocket sevens here, and that makes you think that it's value, right? Well, so like, how do you define a better hand here? Like, would you consider like ace jack of spades a better hand? No, that's a bit behind us because it only has like 30% equity against us. He shouldn't have really ace king here, but if he had ace king here, would that be a better hand? No, that would be- we'd 10, be eights, two pair, 10, nine, we're beating, we're beating eight, sevens, or we're beating sevens and sixes at least. I mean, like six fives got a call. There's a lot of draws that are calling, as you said, as well. Yeah, but I think it's a, I think it's just a heavy function of like an out of position three bet pot at 40 big blinds. Okay. Like the stack off threshold just goes through the floor. Like you, you have to find stack offs right. if you're playing three bet pots. Otherwise, you're torching money. Yeah, all those eights are calling. Yep. Stalling yeah. with worse than every eight. It's value. With some sixes sometimes. So that's where the value goes from. Okay. So value, huh? Uh, we we'll have the nuts. Falls with seven. And I guess the solver is is doing a little bit of you know thinking in the background of is it oh. better to just shove and get him to call you off, or is it better to check and risk getting bluffed off? And he apparently likes to just mm -hmm. do the betting yourself. And that hand actually does have outs, though, if it gets called as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I like a smaller bet here, I think. I think these are always big bet plops, these three Broadways. It's kind yeah. of bad not having the, the flush suit, too. It's pretty bad. Yeah. So this, we need to polarize. Really? So when we polarize, uh, is this a hand we want to polarize with? I don't think so. I think this is no spades. With the spade, we can. Without the spade, we check. We block both ends of the spade. Do it once though. and then give up. Yeah. Yeah, we block both ends of the straight, so it's a it's a bet. And it was uh what size do we bet? Half pot or no, I went small oh. this time. Small. Yeah. yeah, man. Um I would Again, I think it's just, this is a deviation for 40 big blinds here. Like if you're a hundred big blinds deep, I, I I like a bigger bet here. I do. Really smaller check. I think we just check, man. Yeah, this, you're not getting much done here. Do we bluff? <laughs> no, no, we have a I'm checking. We have pocket eights beat. Yeah. 
It's silly. Have it's silly. Just check it, right? Just check yeah, it. We have you a hand that wins a showdown sometimes. Yeah. Um, tiny, I like a, I like a small bet. I, I'd go four eight here. Yeah. Yep. Quarter pot. Oh, right. Out of position, you can actually go a tiny bit larger. That's right. Okay, so let's play. I kind of want to play check or jam here. I kind of like playing check, I think, though. Yeah, ace high showdown check. Would I'm not be surprised. Okay. Jam. Yes. It sucks. It sucks. No, it actually keeps going small. Like, look at that. I, I don't find that too often. I play a lot of check here. They're both uh, good. Pocket nine would raise, pocket eight would raise, pocket seven would raise. But with the a6, we're like in the middle. Like he yeah. doesn't really have a king, a queen, maybe as a queen. But we're like in the middle of the eight. So we have better aces. Yeah, for some, value betting our flesh draw, basically. For some reason, it likes the lower EV line better to bet. Oh, oh horrible. No. Don't this is horrible. Don't horrible. Oh, yeah, double pair guys. board, man. You got a bluff catch. He can't get those chips in fast enough, LP. He snapped Jay. What the shit. fuck? You do call. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's worth 40 bigs when you call. And he did it. Yay. Happy days. Oh. Wow. Is he actually bluffing aces there in game, though? No, I don't That's think That's the so. question. I don't think <laughs> he folds when we jam either. He's value betting aces there because we still have the kings and and stuff. Honestly, you're probably right. I, I don't hate that. I think that's a good answer. I would bet four eight here, I think. Do we check here though? Is that's my question. Is this a check note ever? Never four eight here. I bet small. Yeah. I like this. Our worst There's no checking range on these kind of tech shows. Yeah, okay, good. Because I, I always bet small here. Yeah. Good. I mean, we interact with that kind of, but we don't have a spade. I think we check. Lush yeah, completes or the aggressor in a three bet pot. This is a give up. Shut it down. And maybe get me get not fold. fold. Yeah, I like a folds. Set on turn. Hip hop. Uh, do we size up here? Oh, wait, there's no six. Yeah, I mean, ugh. feels kind of bad, man, right? Like, I kind of like small here also, but I could see merit. Look at it's, this here. It's good for his range. We don't have a checking range here. Oh, I mean, I'm not checking this ever. I'm just, I'm torn between a small and a large bet. I'm betting large just because I know this is a good board for them. It's betting large because how would you play pocket tens? I think size it sizes on like 10, ten nine jack sizes up. Okay, so I did a good that. so like jack nine would bet bigger, I bet. Yeah, you can't size up because of the locked up equity elements, right? There's already oh, I mean, there. Board. Yeah, you see some crazy stuff with like as it gets close to Jack 10 two tone boards. Like you see some really ridiculous sizings and things. It gets pretty wild. The way I would think about that one is if you're betting large, you're polarizing, which means it should be your best hands in draws. And this isn't a draw. All right, Andy, so have a nice day, man. Then. And so since you three bet, you have a very high C bet, you know, continuation percentage. And so this has just got, and that just forces it to be a small bet. Yeah, like you know, I, I, I don't hate that. I'd like to see how we play Jack Nine on that board. I, I think Jack Nine is going to size up. Jack Ten is where it starts going small. I mean, Jack Nine at least is a, is technically a draw. I mean, has, right, right. That's why I'm thinking. I mean, that. You could make Jack Nine. You could make Jack Nine. Even have it in range. Jack 10, no Jack Nines, guys. You do crazy. Have. Crazies and these. I was talking about the board texture, by the way. Not actually. Wow, what do we do with this thing now? I don't know, man. Like the jig is up. Just check. No, no, no. The jig is not up. It's far from being up. It could still roll off a spade here. He could have called two that? overcards. He could have easily called two overcards. Do you have a worse combo in your range? Um, do we bet small again? Though? Do we bluff small here? Yeah, yeah seven. No. Uh, no, no. I, I, I've seen, man. 
I don't know what to do here, and I would check here 100 percent in game. But then I have Louie in the back of my head saying, "This is the worst hand in your entire range." And next thing <laughs> I'm all in and rebuying. So, I'm all in and rebuying. I mean, we got to give up now, right? No, no. turn went check. Oh check. my god! I mean, at some point, you just got to raise the white flag. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Why am I trying? How to mad is he? How mad is he? Bluff. Tell you what, I'm trying to bluff because I know he has pocket king. My subconscious knows it. <laughs> it's Adrian Mateo. You got to bluff. Put all the chips in. <laughs> Three bet. He's a maniac with a deep tip of nine. Thank you, guys. <laughs> all right, range bet small. Maybe I don't understand what VPIP means. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Oh, I want to tell you guys, next Friday, we're going to analyze my database. Oh, shit. All right. So get ready. Get, get the grills fired up. It's roasting Friday. <laughs> uh... I want to go all in, but it's going to be small. Yeah. Let him let him raise. Okay. I go all in. Go all in. Oh, you now you're going. Now you're going. Can eat. Go all in. Go all in. Nah. You do it. your own betting. You got to do your own betting. Yeah. Let him call you with a queen. He's just oh. like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just the turned nuts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Vivian, he's super using for sure. I think we're going to run cold today. I don't know if I'm going to register games. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't register anything, man. You're drawing dead. Oh, man. Bet small. I don't have I'm not chance. bet big. Oh, Mayo uh, is a bet big. Why do you not bet big? Look at this wonderful board. Do you think he has any any of it? Yep. Seven, eight. He's got seven, eight full frequency. You Pocket sixes, calls, maybe. He's calling your, your three bets with King Six suited. Dude, it is small blind versus button. Absolutely, he is. Well, yeah, I'm calling. I'm calling three bets with King Six Suited. Well, oh my, dude, these oh. these maniacs, man. The, these maniacs, they got five four in their range. They got all kinds of crazy stuff. What is this? Also, he has all the sets, and we Who's don't know. Really what is this? Thirteen big blinds. You're torching by folding this hand. Now, once I understand, I don't get to fold. It, it's easier to find the C bets. I said King Six. I said it exactly. Is it? Yeah. This game is rigged. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's the that's the heuristic, right, Ken? If you're playing three bet pots out of position, forty big lines, you just don't fold. At large, <laughs> it's, it's rebuy. I, I honestly, uh, so ten nine two tone. I think we can bet large. I would not be surprised to see maybe even jams. I'm betting all in. Jack all and a queen. Nice with LP, Jack and a queen. Well, no, yeah. no small. Jack and the queen who bet small. Large. No. Stuff it, stuff it, stuff it, stuff it, stuff it. Stuff it. Oh, small <laughs> bet's bigger. There you oh, go. Stuff it. it. It's everything. Except for Every, it's, everything. I was about to say, Scotty. Everything, everything but small. Big everything but small and medium. It's the same heuristic, okay? So, like, when it converges around Jack 10, two-tone boards, like, with a blank, this is where you see, like, the shenanigans start coming into play. I like a small bet here. Yeah. No, Four point eight. Check. Ace, ace high board bet. Even smaller. Yeah. No, and I'm check. Well, uh, yeah, we're checking. That's not very good for us. Check. Flush completed. Easy check. Oh, yeah. And check. Check. Oh. Check. Yep. Got to check. Check hope. Maybe he'll check behind. Nope. See ya. I'm out. All in 19%. All 75%. Yeah, I know, but still, it's once to still rip it. It's just crazy. That's crazy. This shows us it's, like it's like, yeah. Uh, Dry, we can bet small. Yeah, that's small. I like small. Me too. Not super small. Yep, right there. Yeah. No, it actually goes bigger. Better bet for right. value. One of our best games. Yep. Apparently. All right, so we're all in then. Nope. Stuff it. 
Oh my goodness. There you go. Happy Thanksgiving. Here's my turkey. <laughs> I think it would be a good exercise to really maybe spend a day playing the, the check nodes that we just kind of always um, omit from the strategy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's about 50%. Yeah. I Nine. like betting big here, I think. Nine. Definitely. It's a big bet. We size up for value with our best kings. Yep. Yeah, we want to reduce the stack to pot ratio. And when you don't have the flush card, you're interested in getting more money in faster. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Smart logic. That's small. Make it. I like a small bet. Nine big blinds here. You want fold equity? Yeah, I think I'm still going for eight. Yeah, I think yeah, but this hand is trash. This hand is. It is trash. trash. It is trash. That's there too. No spade. We size down. I could find some bigger bets with more sort of with this hands spade, with more going on. Up and barrel. I could I could support a larger bet with a spade. I definitely could do that. Yep. The ace of spades. Oh, that's no bueno. You play check. It's going to bluff some, but I'm checking. We saw where it still likes to do the small barrel when it board oh. pairs the low card there. King four off. That's a pretty light float. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see some larger betting on this texture, but I think this hand wants to go small. Um, check. I would play check here. Is it going to go all in, in though? <laughs> yeah, you got to call up these dams. Second pair. Uh, I don't think we get to fold. You go all in. Go in now. <laughs> yeah. You have second pair and block the spade. So stuff the turkey. I would feel oh like my such god, a we just I did that. we're just punting constantly <laughs> against better hands. <laughs> I was Small looking bit. at my numbers for this spot and I was like, something's not adding up. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. And now it's just like, yeah. It's not Small going bet. well, right? Nope. Small, man, what are you doing? One big line. Uh, I would continue small, I think. Yeah, five. I like five. No, even smaller. It checks or it goes really small. Oh, I guess the, the marginal made hand is better than the... Oh, sick. Black and call. Yeah, I mean, if you're blocking that strong of a hand, you definitely have to call if he goes big. Nine, six. What size? All right, I want. I like somebody, a, I like a somebody, big bet here. Hang on, hang on. Now. I want somebody who doesn't speak often to speak. Yeah, What's that's a good. Idea. You want to go for here and why? You're gonna have to call somebody out. About Salwa. Yeah, I know. I know Salwa is lurking in the shadows. Anyone? Al's new. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna put you on the spot, Al. All right, let's do it. So there Al, we go. What size do you want to go for? For here, I would go um, four point eight. And why do you want to go small? Um, to allow them to bluff. Think about your range. Do you have a better race than that? I'm sorry, what was that? Think about your range when you three bet here. Do you have a better ace? Do I have a better eight? ace? Ace, yeah. Yeah. Well, so to, so to guide you just a smidge, okay? What do you want to do at the top of your range when you get the best hands possible? Like, what, what's your goal? Well, actually, from here, I, I would check then. That's well, no, 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 no. So, like, okay, let's just think about it like from a range perspective. You want to maximize. Why do we balance our range? We balance our range because you need weak hands to help you get equity from your best hands. So you don't show up like old man coffee and just never get paid with your aces. Yeah. So, so the, goal, the goal is to, yeah. One, one of our best aces. 
right? This is top yeah. pair, top kicker. We want to size up for value. If you're betting small exactly. here, you're leaving money on the table. You need right. to so you want to you want to maximize value with the top part of your range. Yeah. You bet big. Yeah. And you bet big because he's going to have ace jack. He's going to have ace ten. He's going to have ace queen that you're just going to get paid by. And draws. He's got draws here that got a call. Yep. And draws. Okay. All right. Want to do another one, Al? Yeah. Sure. Before we move off that one, though, uh, one thing on when Galen said the reason you want to bet big there is because you want to be betting your your junk big so you get called when you have your big hands. I think it's the opposite, but it's still true. I think it's you bet your big hands so that so that your bluffs work. Right. I mean, it's a difference of perspective, right? I mean, but they're I, both. But I totally agree. True. With, I totally agree with it. For me, it's really we bet bigger for value it's like a greed thing we're just greedy with our best hands so you don't think if if i bet that that small that he would try to bluff it no so yeah, generally the that. heuristic in position in a three bet pot you can almost you don't want to say always but if you're in a three bet pot in position uh, a gto solver is not going to have a really robust raising range especially at this short of a stack just not going to be doing too much of that Okay. Like, think about how cap he is. Like, he doesn't have ace king, he doesn't have kings. And as the three better, we have all of that. Yeah, but he does have ace queen. He does have ace jack. Anyhow, here we are. What kind of size would you go for here and why? What kind of, um, well, out of position, I would actually check here. Um, okay. So, Al, uh, in general, if you want an easy trick, okay, whenever you take a flop as the three better, in general, like if you look at the strategy here, this these this represents all the possible flop in the game, and like the colors are betting. So, if you start off the base that you should be betting most of the time, you'll be a lot closer to GTO. So, it's always going to be a bet here. You three okay. bet and then you follow up with the C bet every time. Try try okay. that out in your games. Whenever you three bet, you C bet the flop. And when Louis so, points so out, let me let me just uh verify. So, what was the the action? I guess pre flop. So we raised. we raised right. We three he, bet. He, okay. Okay. All right. We make it eight point six, and then he calls a three bet. Okay. And when Louis says all the callers are betting. He doesn't mean that all the callers are betting. He means all the colors are betting. <laughs> Thanks, you, Scott. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I would check this flop a lot too. I know we were not doing it, but I still find checks here. This is a spot where we need to size up. I don't think right. checking's a low EV option, by the way. I don't think it's a low EV option, but um, if you're playing from a range perspective, this board benefits heavily from a large bet. It's also, Whereas, like, uh, it's that pattern we see over and over. We have the nut. It does. Yep. We have the nut. So we're just going to be stuck here. That's why we three bet because it's easier to believe. So we just bet big. No. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good plan coming for turn and river and everything. These are, uh, these are my Perfect. favorite moments in the study session, right? Like when, when you or I or someone else goes on one of these long monologues justifying their, their rationale. Ah, and then it's and you click the button and it's like, nope, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still my favorite. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we need to check. Not just a bet small, but a check. Oh, so good. All right, Al. All right, so the score is Louis one, Al one. Let's see who gets the knockout punch in the third <laughs> round. <laughs> Um, from here, I would, I would go ahead and lead out just because he, uh, checked the flop, the flop as well. Um, I don't think I, gonna... go ahead. How big Al? Uh, I would go 4.8. I'm checking again. 
checking in. I, I was going to say I support leading out just because he shouldn't be checking back a ton of King X other than his weakest. But he's going to have some, right? That's uh, that's. He why should I have some if he's balanced. He definitely should have some. Like he's going to have King seven, nine, six sometimes. My theory is when we check, we don't check a lot in these spots, but when we check second pair, and we actually have the ace over card, we have a really we're top of range here with our best queen. Like I think uh, when we do play it, a check strategy on the flop and they check back i think the motion is to often just check our percent, second pair what's, again what's our percent of check with one w t f h help me out vivian on the flop what's our check percentage on the flop um i think globally it was pretty high actually 70 percent on the flop yeah there, it was globally it was pretty high there was quite a bit We're it's in right the, in that like that valley of check. The valley of checks. Yeah. So yeah, I think heuristically here, betting's not wrong. It's very competitive EV wise. I think the mistakes start coming in if you start large betting this versus a balanced player. One is now what are you doing? We're not River? jamming. All right, so we'll call we'll call round two a draw because you both were right. So here scores two I two. Just bluff. Yeah, I would I would just uh a bit small here. Three or okay. Uh, three. I would bet three here. I think three, three is too small. Oh, just yeah, yeah, I was gonna say um two. I was gonna go ten personally. Yeah, me too. I like ten. Ten and not folding. Does he have a oh we got him right. bluff? Oh we got him. We got it. Nice. Finally, won a hand against the solver, and I think we're gonna wrap it up on that. Thanks a lot right. for watching, everybody. And make sure to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And make sure to join our Discord, join our community, get together, get studying. Let's go.